So this video carries on from a previous one where I solved a system of differential equations. This particular video is now going to try and verify the solution using MATLAB. So what I'm going to try and do is get MATLAB to spit me out the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors associated with the system. And in order to do that, I need to draw out this matrix A, which I have highlighted. So the matrix is 0, 1, 3, and negative 10. And what you're going to notice when I jump across here is that I have defined indeed that matrix A, as you can see. And then I've called a function in MATLAB, which is going to spit out the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues, and in that order. And the equation, oh sorry, the function is EIG. And then you just need to give it the matrix that you want it to calculate it on. So if I click run, it's going to spit me out some um, information. And what we can see is it's spat out um, a 2x2 two two matrix for the eigenvectors and also a 2x2 two two matrix for the eigenvalues. So let's start with the values one. We can see it's giving us 0.292 approximately and negative 10.29 for the second one. And if we go over to our solution that we worked through previously, I have highlighted that we indeed got these same um, values out using our manual methods. So the next thing to try and verify is whether the eigenvectors um, actually are the same as what we got. And if we scroll down, we can see that the first eigenvector that we got, C1, was equal to 1 and 0.292. Now, if you jump over to MATLAB, what you're going to find is that the first um, eigenvector, so this is the one associated with the first eigenvalue, um, is not the same as what we have. And the reason for this is we had to pick a value for C1, okay? And in, in our case, we picked that C1 was equal to 1. However, MATLAB, it might not have necessarily picked the same value, and in fact, it definitely hasn't, since we've got a different um, set of values falling out. However, what is important is the ratio between these values is the same, okay? Because we could have picked any C1 value here, but the ratio between those two values, the C1 to C2, would have cancelled out with each other, and we would have got the same thing. So that's how we can verify whether our solution is the same as MATLAB's. So the ratio here, if we do the bottom divided by the top, it's going to be easier. So 0 0.292 divided by 1 is going to be 0 0.292. So let's see if we can get that from MATLAB. So if we look here, if we do 0 0.2799 divided by 0 0.96, we should end up with the same, um, same ratio as what we had from the manual solution. So if I scroll this down, oop, so 0 0.2799 divided by, sorry, what was it, 0 0.96. Um, we end up with 0 0.292, okay, and that's what I said the ratio should be here. So that means that MATLAB has calculated a same um, solution or same ratio as what we have got. We can do the same sort of thing for the second um, eigenvector. So for that one, we got negative 10.29, if we do a ratio divided by 1, leaves us with negative 10.29. So let's verify that that's the same in MATLAB. So if we look here, 0.9953 divided by, I'm going to copy it this time, this, 0.9953 divided by this should give us the same ratio, and it does. So negative 10.29 is what we got as well. So therefore, our eigenvectors uh, have been verified with MATLAB. So the other thing that we can verify is whether our initial conditions were met, and that's going to um, double check that our K1 and K2 values that we calculated um, were correct. All right. Remember that these K1 and K2s are going to be dependent on what you pick back up here for your eigen um, vectors. Okay, so if you pick a different C1 value, you end up with different values in the eigenvector. But this should all kind of be cancelled out in the end when you go ahead and actually sub in K1 and K2 into these equations. Okay, because the product here, so the 1.161 and the negative 0.161 and these corresponding ones, they should all work out to be uh, the same no matter what was selected back in those previous steps. So what we can do is actually go and um, plot our solution and see if our initial conditions were met. So that's what I've done underneath here. At the moment it's commented out, so I will decomment it. So all I've done is to find a time vector, so from 0 to 10 um, is that. 
I've defined my w and my z functions based on what I found manually earlier, and then I've plotted them all on the same graph. So if I run this now, what I should see is a plot come up. All right, so t is on uh, the horizontal axis, and I've called it y on the vertical axis. That's technically the w and the z um, outputs. So if we have a look at, we'll start with w, which is the blue line. What we can see is that at time equals um, zero, all right, so x it's calling it since that's the horizontal, um, the vertical is giving us a reading of one. And if we go back and have a look at our conditions, that was indeed uh, one of the conditions that we were trying to meet. I just scroll back up. You can see here w is equal to 1 when t is equal to 0. So we can verify the second condition. Right? We can write it this way or we said we could write it in terms of z. So z should be equal to 2 when t is equal to 0. And if we go back and have a look at the plot, that should indeed be happening. So z is this other line. And if we scroll it back, you can see at t equals 0, it's reading off a value of 2. So that's all good. So that's pretty much all there is in terms of this video and verifying our solutions um, using a software package. Um, so I'll see you in another video.